Welcome back to the lab. Today we're doing some compliance repairs on this lovely Z32 behind me here. Let's have a look at how much fun that is in New Zealand. When a vehicle's been for its compliance check, we run through a whole heap of things and if it fails, you get a list of things that need to be repaired. I've had a bit of a look at that list. At this point in time, I'm starting to get cold feet about this job. Well, that might be why. I should put those on. Now, without going into too much detail, there's a couple of things that are pretty, I don't know, the tear weight of the vehicle. I mean, I don't know why they're not allowed to just look on the internet and see what these things weigh. I mean, this is not going to be significantly different to factory. It's got even factory wheels on it. It's aftermarket exhaust change of weight by a couple of kgs here or there we like talking about weight on this channel don't we it's funny but it's not going to be significantly different so that's one thing that they should look at is once they have a particular type of vehicle in their system their system should know that that's what those vehicles weigh and they shouldn't have to every time tell the system that this is what this vehicle weighs this is what this vehicle weighs you shouldn't have to be weighing a vehicle every single time you comply that style of vehicle. But anyway, that's my gripe. Uh, both rear upper arms cracked on the rear suspension. Well, they're not. I know they're not. It's just the style of welding that the factory has used. Let's, let's have a look. I'm assuming my torch is around there. It's probably around here on the floor. There it is my mess I've actually I've just closed the door you can't hear it started raining so it rolled as has American spec wheel these are a deeper dish they're wider than the JDM ones not too many of those better not open the door that'll roll away not too many of those kicking around in New Zealand um, there's a, few, a handful so at the other end of this arm here see the style of welding that they've used to attach that to that it leaves a sharp edge around the, ed the the edge of the attachment point and down the bottom there they had an arrow pointing to one of the one of the sides and said it was cracked it's not cracked it's not cracked it definitely isn't now because for argument's sake i've had to remove this arm put it on the bench take the bush out of it take the paint off around the area tig weld the edge of it so it definitely isn't cracked put the bush back in it and put it back in the car just for the sake of making someone feel happy it's interesting he hasn't said anything about that one which to the untrained eye if you don't know what you're looking at you could say that that is cracked as well because there's a line there the edge of where the this piece attaches to that piece you say oh it's cracked nope Nope, definitely isn't. And so the rear brake pads, uh, they, they failed those because they didn't know what they were, so they don't have a compliance standard for them, so you can't put the car through the system and on the road. Well, guys, read the freaking part number. Uh, it's not hard. The, oh, sure, the piston has gone through and worn some of the part number just there. But I can clearly see that these are RDA brake pads and you've got the, it actually says brake pads, you can clearly read that. And you've got the bulk of the number there. Look it up in the book and yeah, why, here's New Zealand clean and green, we're all going to EVs and all that and saving the environment. We're taking all the water, water systems off all the councils and putting it all under one roof to save the environment. And we're throwing away brake pads like this because we can't read a part number completely 100% on it. It's ridiculous. It really is. Anyway, you guys would be probably quite sick of hearing me ranting about things like this, but this, this, these are the challenges you'll come across. Um, these arms here are apparently worn. I'm about to put this wheel back on now that we've fixed that, and we've fixed that. There's nothing wrong with them, but anyway, we've done what we had to do. We're about to put the wheel back on and we're going to check these have been flagged as loose. It's not normally this part here that wears out. It's normally that part there. But in this case, it's written down as being 
that being the problem. So we have to have a look and see what's going on. I, I honestly really would much prefer to be working on that, but hey, whatever. Even the BMW today, actually. But poor guy needs it done, and he trusts me to do it right, so we'll do it. And here we have our traction arm removed. That's flagged as being cracked. That's cracked. It's not cracked. That is not a crack. Neither is that. There's nothing wrong with that. That is a lack of paint from the factory. No surprise, it's like a 1989 car. And a little bit of surface rust on there. And before anyone chooses to argue, remember that I am a qualified aircraft tradesman who did crack testing for a living on aircraft components. That is simply the edge of the material where it's welded onto here. Da -da 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 -da. Is it cracked all the way around there? All the way to the base? No, it's not, is it? It's not cracked. Oh, that fell on the floor. Is it cracked at the top there? No, it's not, eh? Hey. It's just a lack of paint. A little bit of surface rust. Panic, panic. I'll show you something. Oh, it's cracked. It's bad, bad, bad. Oh, it's good now. And there we are. A little bit of CRC in a paper towel. That is how they look from the factory. Brand spanking new. I don't know what all these little marks here are. Something to do with it coming out in the past and adjusting it for the eccentric bushes that are in there. But that's not crap. So, I mean, how do you have... The paper trail probably says that because that's been flagged as cracked, that either has to be crack tested and certified as not been cracked, or it has to be repaired and then probably crack tested and certified that it's not cracked after it's been repaired, or it has to be replaced with brand new, which is going to look exactly the same as that. Mm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. These jobs are fun! Do we put some paint on that, or do we just TIG weld it like I did with the other one? Just do a couple of TIG welds around here just to keep them happy. I'll do that. Oh, it's fair to say they got that bit right. Right hand side steering rack bush. It, uh, it was falling apart while I was trying to get it out of the car, but the rest of it was pretty shonky. Some of that is fresh most of that is as you can see from the dirt on there that has been like that for a while these are not easy to get out they're even less easy to get back in fortunately there's a new one in town so we'll go and get that it's been the next little while losing more hair and skin off my knuckles to get it back in the car yeah i reckon this week might be the week for things just not going according to plan that steering rack bush was a Anyway, that's done. It's changed. I did lose some skin off my knuckles and a few hairs, but look. Oh no. We've got a seal missing off our brake caliper. The other ones appear to be there. I don't know about the condition. They've certainly got a bit of dirt on them. They might be alright, but there's one missing. I think I might have a rebuild kit for one of these under the house somewhere. Yes, under the house. Oh, unless it's in my box of stuff on the shelf there. Let's have a look. And then for my next trip, put a one of those into the end of one of those. These are good because they have an insert that goes into the arm and it always sticks on the end of the ball joint and makes life a challenge. That's all right. We'll get it done. Unfortunately, we're not going to get this finished today. We've got all the wheels back on, so that's good. I did get that ball joint in and there. Oh, that was... Lost some hair. Stressful. But anyway, whatever. Um, that's done. The the it's in there somewhere. Steering shaft universal joint. 
has been flagged as loose, but you know, honestly, it's I can't see anything wrong with it at all. And I've never ever ever sold one for one of these cars or replaced one. They just, but hey, I mean, whatever. It was flagged, so I had a look at it. I I can't see anything wrong with it. So I've written up my list here. Not not being at all skeptical about these arms before we got to there but anyway it's got a tick see see the tiny little wee tick uh steering universal joint play i've crossed that eh. high cast arms they just haven't turned up so i can't fit them courier hasn't delivered them so we can't push it out of the door today so that's a bit frustrating it's going to be in the way for the weekend uh all the brake pads are done left front i just talked about that that's done and steering rack bushes uh, well, actually, let's be there. Steering rack bush. Only one was having any problems, so that has been changed, and that is now good. Good, good, good. So, and the only other thing, I, I just what what is that? If someone can tell me what that is, if you can read that, that says movement. I don't know what that says, and that might be left hand. Is that left hand? Yeah, that'll be left hand. So movement. Uh, I don't know. If you can read that, cool. Please tell me what it is. That would be awesome, and then I can maybe fix it over the weekend while we're waiting for our high cast arms to come. From, I think they were coming from Matta Matter or something like that. We can change those without taking the wheels off, so that's all right. The car needs to be in the air to do that. Uh, I can't do any work on on the march. I mean, I'm not going to climb. If this was a stock car, you just work on the march over the top of it or climb all over it and it'd be fine. But we're not going to do that to the poor BMW, obviously. So to do anything on that is going to require... Putting this back on the ground, pushing it outside, pulling the BMW back. Um, I haven't got my parts for the BMW. Ah. So a little bit gridlocked. But that's alright. I probably do need some time off. Um, Ho-hum. Let me have a cold drink and think about what we're going to do next. Yeah, i got my little deck chair out. Sitting here looking around, and I reckon I found what I need to be doing on the weekend. It's got something to do with that three inch piece of stainless steel tube, which is actually, it's quite a big bit of stainless steel tube tucked away inside there. We can do the exhausts on the march. Find a little bit that needs to go out the back with the diffuser. So we will have to move. Mr. BMW. And yeah, I'm going to have to put that one on the ground and put her outside to get on with what we want to do. That's a good idea. And in the meantime, it's just gone past five o'clock. So have a good weekend, guys. All right. Cheers, boy.